one thing to set up and practice against every single character in the game, except Zato, because nobody plays Zato. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Guilty Gear Strive. Today we're going to be talking our way through training mode, and as you can see on the screen, I'm currently setting up Sol to do on position reset 6S. And I'm also going to set it to do the round call. This is something that we can practice against Sol, and that's what we're going to kind of be doing through the entire video, is finding little things to practice against different characters, whether it's some kind of mix-up, a sequence that you basically need to practice against and see and feel out and understand, or it's a specific situation that occurs a lot when dealing with certain characters. Souls, they love doing round start 6S, so we want to try and find a way to punish that, try and find a way to blow it up, and deal with it. And as you can see with Milia, there is even a little combo that I can get if I think a soul is going to go in and do this move on round start. Knowing things like this for common behaviors is very useful and important. So the actual thing that we're going to look at is set up a bot to basically run at us and do close slash, fast 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 slash. If you fought souls online, you've probably seen them trying to use this to cheat people out and to try and basically bait you into pressing a button so they get a big juicy counter hit and blow you up. I think I said county hit, but you get the idea. The key to this, of course, is just finding the gaps. You can actually squeeze a kick in, depending on your character. I'm sure some characters might not be able to, but you can generally squeeze some kind of fast button in if you're quick enough. You can also just throw him as his fist comes in if you're feeling a bit lazy and you get a side switch and you just get to throw him, of course. Moving on swiftly to Kai. Kai is a little bit more complicated in terms of what we're setting up. What I have set up here for Kai is a bot that will hit me with his lightning bolt, put me in the shock state, and then do one of three separate sequences. That is the Dia Eklat, which is the safe ender, the Stun Dipper, I think it's called Stun Dipper, I remember it being called Stun Dipper, is the low, and then the overhead Pudra Arc, I think it's called these days, just to try and sort of get hit by, well, to try and hit him out of that effectively. If you hit him before the startup frames of that, you can actually blow him up as a result. So getting comfortable with this sequence and then practicing and trying to get a good visual on it is going to be important. This is how Kai's will generally try and mix you up with the Fudra Arc or the Stun Dipper. And so you need to be able to block and try and punish the Stun Dipper, especially if you're not in shock state. And with the overhead, you need to just try and spot it out and hit him out of it. Take some practice, but it's well worth doing. If you don't know how to set up a bot like this to do this kind of behavior, there is a video that I made or called How to Beat Everything that goes through how to use the training mode. A couple of good shortcuts to know, by the way, is that when you are in the practice mode with the opposite training dummy, so when you press the record button first, you're going to like a practice mode. If you press the play button, you can actually cycle what slot you're recording onto. Anyway. The devil herself, May, has joined us, and we need to practice against May. Now, the first thing you should, of course, practice against any May is just take some time, learn how to beat her individual dolphins. After that, what I did was I set her to do one of three things. I set her to either do a heavy dolphin into a slash, I set her to do a fast dolphin, the slash dolphin, into a slash, and I set her to do the heavy dolphin into the fast dolphin. By doing this, I could start to learn how to read the difference between the heavy dolphin and the slash dolphin, and how I could respond accordingly depending on each. And what I learned was pretty simple. Just in neutral, when you're full screen away from May, just keep an eye on her feet, and you'll actually see the dolphin, the heavy slash dolphin, pop up and go like, oh, hello, and then they'll start the charge, and you can generally hit her out of that dolphin. The slash dolphin, very, very quick, very difficult to react to, takes a lot of practice to do. You probably can manage it, you probably can 6p it preemptively as well quite easily, but definitely something kind of tricky to react to. And as you can see, because she's plus on the heavy dolphin, if you don't react fast enough to it, she can get the free slash dolphin. But if you do manage to spot her out of stuff, then you can beat up on her a little bit. Also, feel free to take some time during these training exercises to just beat up on your enemy a little bit to vent some stress if it's not going well. The biggest tip I want to give you, by the way, when doing this is it's very easy to fall into a trap of predicting, not reacting. And you've got to try and make sure that you are reacting to what's happening on the screen. Because you're pressing the button that will start the sequence off, you really want to be careful about doing things preemptively or doing things too early because you know it's coming. You want to try and simulate an actual match as best as possible. Try and break the habit of predicting any sequence that you think, oh, well, she did three of this in a row, so next time she must do that doesn't work super well. 
The other thing I want to talk about is if you don't know a character's moves, for example, I knew nothing about Axel when setting up this video in terms of how to play him. I've played against a few online, but I've never actually put hands on the character myself since, like, plus R, when I tried him out once just to see kind of what he did. So it took me a little while to like figure out how he played, and this is honestly fine and worth doing. If you don't understand a character, go in and then try them out and just press their buttons, see how they work. There's the command list always is available to you in the menu as well, so do go take a look at that. Try out a few different moves, see how they feel. The other thing is, you don't actually have to do this all, you know, 15 characters in a row like I've just done here. You can do it. In any order you like, you can focus on one character, you can focus on the more common opponent you're hitting, or if you just came out of a matchup and don't understand something, you can go and practice that immediately and maybe set yourself up some mixes. What I've set up with Axel is, a, is actually four different mixes. The first is he will just do the low chain into the explosion, the second is he'll do the pullback, the third is he'll do it into the twirl, and the fourth is he'll do his command grab, which looks a little bit similar, where he puts the sickles through the ground and then pulls them in and tries to command grab you. And so... Playing around with those, trying to figure out what's the best response to all of those was a little bit tricky. The thing I found, of course, was that you can go over the, the big swell. That only hits low to the ground, so you can actually go into that. What I also found is you can just stand up. You don't have to, like, crouch block full screen against him. Move forward a little bit, move back a little bit, jostle a little bit. And then when you see a move happening, jump, stay blocking, and he'll pull you in with the overhead. The grapple or the command grab is the one you really want to kind of be a bit scared of because that of course is going to just blow you up out of nowhere if you are very hesitant and blocking quite distant of course axel can always jump and contest the air as well but well these mix-ups and this is just designed to sort of get you familiarity with one piece of the puzzle at a time not everything at once that's too much Next up is Chip, and Chip is a bit of an odd one. Chip is one of these heavy mix-up based characters that is difficult to set up these training situations against because he is so versatile and has so many different options, it's tough. Eno is also going to be the same in the future, so if you're looking for hot Eno advice, it's kind of tough because her mix-ups are very elaborate. With Chip, what I set up was the bot to do his wreckers, either just ending on the low or going into the overhead. I also set one up to do an alpha blade, and what I should have done and didn't do, but you absolutely should do, is set up one that will also go from slash heavy slash into the command grab, so or whatever sequence you want to go into the command grab, so you can practice seeing that coming as well, where he turns invisible, you'll just see some leaves, and then he'll grab you and do a cool ninja move where he like makes a clone and wah 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 and then bang and you explode and it's really cool and dramatic uh but definitely worth practicing against that as well next character we're going to talk about is potemkin potemkin's another bit of an odd one to practice against because he doesn't really throw you into mix-up situations per se although his mix-up is very much am i going to throw you or am i going to hit you it's not as if he goes through a big complicated sequence of moves and then throws you out of it. It's more that he's going to either try and grab you or he's going to try and hit you again and try and bait you to do different things. The big thing you can do with Potemkin is just practice against his individual moves. Find unique punishes that will work for your character. You can, if you block Mega Fist from the right distance, you can punish him out of it. Um, you can generally punish quite a lot of his stuff and there are unique ways to get around and there are unique ways to get around various moves, like, for example, I can Mirage through Hammerfall. I look forward to using that online a lot, and I look forward to getting it wrong a lot as well, where I just Mirage into his fists and die. The only other thing I really recommend probably practicing against Pot is dealing with the Heavenly Potemkin Buster Whiff. When he goes high into the air, and he'll usually come down with, I think it's Jump Dust, where he'll fall with. Try and blow that up, maybe, but we'll see. Faust is a, another one who isn't very mix-up based, but one move that does have a bit of a mix to it is, well, the Scarecrows. What I found very simply with this one, I have him set up to do all three at random, as you can see it says random inside, so he'll basically run through all three of these every, like, and just randomly pick them. If you just walk backwards and just watch the Scarecrow behind you, the other two kind of take care of themselves and you just need to care about that one behind you. If you see it move or twitch, you just block it and you should be fine and safe and dandy. Good way of dealing with this mix. It's really actually not that quick. Once you've practiced it a few times, you'll kind of get a good feel for it. Now to reveal the secrets of my character, which is kind of a shame, but hey, yeah, sure, I'll do it for the sake of a video. What I'm going to run through with Milia is her bread and butter mix-up and kind of how to deal with it. So I've set up a bot to do close slash into 6H and then basically do the three mixes out of that close slash into Mirage, or sorry, 6H into Mirage into Grab, to do the fast fall into Grab, so close slash, fast fall, 
grab. And then, last but by no means least, just do the safe exit. There is also a frame trap version where she will do the hair car, but that's the safe version. And these are kind of the big three that you'll see quite a lot online. And then she will just do these at random against me, and I just have to practice trying to catch her out of it. What I found was that they are very reactable. You can kind of see the mirage or the fastball coming if you know what to look for and know what they look like, and just grab her out of them that will either block her grab or you will actually grab her before she can grab you, which is devastating for Amelia because, well, she doesn't like being in pressure. One of the important things here, of course, is that as a Amelia player, I know that I could cancel the close slash early. I know that I could do a number of different options. I could mess with your timings in so many different ways, but honestly, these three are going to be useful to practice against. Zato, however, I honestly, I, I'm drawing a blank. The amount of Zato players I've encountered are minimal, and the amount of Zatos who know what they're doing is a big fat goose egg. It's zero. I have met none that really seem to know how to play the character just yet. I imagine that a few of them exist, but they probably have been playing Zato for ages and are only in heaven. If you are playing against Zato, the advice I can give you is try and hit Eddie where you can. He dies to a single hit as long as he's not in a press, which is where he goes into the big wiggly arm mode. When he's in the big wiggly arm mode, you won't be able to hit him and kill him. He'll just hit you back out of it, so don't hit that. But otherwise, try and hit him, kill him, and then put pressure on the Zato. Play to your game plan. His is a bit of a mystery and is kind of difficult for people to figure out. Up next is everybody's favorite character. Ramlethal Valentine. A lot of Rams you'll encounter online have already started autopiloting, and tell me if you've seen this combo before that I'm about to show you, but it took me about three seconds to figure out kind of how it worked, and it took me a little bit of fiddling to figure out the surprisingly simple solution to this string. So you've been cornered by Ram, you're being hit by a sword, you can't actually burst out of the sequence as well because she will just blow you up with the other sword. So I tried a bunch of different fancy tech to try and do it, I tried miraging out past the explosion just to get hit by the second sword. I tried to like duck under it and try and sweep her, I tried to hit her with a long reaching move early. None of it was working, oh god how do you beat this? Turns out the secret is you, you just dash out of it. Now of course, once a Ram sees that you've done this, she might change up her behavior, but I guarantee that a lot of Ram players online, they might be a little bit flowcharty and might just default to this. The amount of Ram players I see who throw their swords mid-screen, for example, is crazy. Also, yes, I do have a setup to wake up reversal every single time because, again, this is the best way to practice against Ram, right? It's like playing against the real one on the internet. It's incredible. The power of bots these days. For Leo, an honest answer would be to practice it against his high-low mix-up in back turn stance. So if you set him to back turn stance, he can either do a, I think it's 2k to hit you low, or you can just go into an overhead. Practice against trying to block that mix is going to be a little bit tricky. You can probably react to the overhead with some practice. The real answer, the real real answer to beating Leo online is to practice your DP punish. So you'll see him do Eisenstern. Just practice getting a good, consistent punish on him, try out a bunch of different sequences, and you probably will find one that will blow him up. Of course, the mission also exists, by the way, to deal with his side-to-side -side mix up That is, in the, in the mission mode, you can find that and grab Leo out of his side switch. Practicing that is perfectly fine, the mission mode is very well suited for it. Nagoro Yuki took me a little while to set up properly and to try and get to grips with him, he's a very complicated character. The first tip I will give you for Nagoro Yuki is to go into settings and set the blood gauge to regenerate instantaneously, that will save you a lot of grief in the long term. Otherwise I set the bot up quite simply to do a simple sequence of close slash, fast slash, fast slash, cancel, and then out of that cancel either do another close slash, do a regular grab, or do a command grab. And then out of those three options, trying to figure out solutions for them. This is the kind of thing that you'll see Nagoro Yuki's do a lot. The smart ones will usually use the dash to get out. If he does that, he is plus. So be very careful about pressing buttons when he dashes backwards and away from you. What I found was with Melia, I can actually just command dash to do his dash. You can try and throw him, but that will only work if he tries to hit you. If he puts out the command grab, then he will just explode you. You can try and jump out. Out of that, you can beat his grab options, but he will catch you with that close slash that goes up. And it's, you know, it will reset the pressure for him, basically, and put you in a difficult situation. There might be unique solutions to your character for this mix, but part of fighting against the Goryukis is just dealing with a character who can reset his pressure very easily. So, yeah, take some practice, see what the Goryukis are doing against you online, and, well, give that a bash and see how it works. I will say Mirage just resets me, which is actually quite nice because he spent Blood Gauge to get into this situation, and that's a net positive for me. Next up is Giovanna. 
We've talked about Giovanna before in the How Do I Be Everything video, and this is just kind of retreading the same stats. Setting up a sequence where she'll do close slash 2H into either the flip kick, into the spiral doggo, or into the twirly dog kick. Swatting out these three and having an option that can kind of beat all of them is going to be important to beating Geo. One more tip I will give though is if she does actually land one of the, the plus moves where she does like the flip kick and she has plus frames, or if she lands Spiral Doggo on you and hits you with that, if you backdash and just use the dash button to do it, if you backdash the moment you leave block stun, you can generally evade whatever she hits you with next, as long as you're not in the corner, right? If you're in the corner, you're just kind of stuck. Next up is Angie, and there's no great rewards for guessing what we're going to learn with Angie, and that's dealing with Fujin. So all I did was I set him up to do the three variations on Fujin that you've seen most often online. That's finishing with the low, finishing with the overhead, and finishing with the little hop and the throw. And basically, yeah, just spent a long time practicing against that. This is literally why the video was incepted, by the way, was that I was spending an evening just watching some Twitch. I think I was watching some Brian F on Twitch and just practicing against an Angie because, well, I've not played that many. And so when I play them, I tend to just die to this. So I just went in. And yeah, what I found out was you just block low. You can react to the other two options. It takes some practice. They're quick. It's not easy, but it's doable. And so with some training, yeah, it's perfectly manageable. With Eno, Eno is a difficult one to also set up practice conditions against because Eno's mix is so variable. She can come in, she can do high, high, low. She can come in and do high, low. She can come in and just do low. It's very, very difficult to set up a bot that can kind of simulate that experience. There's a couple of things with Eno. First is just learn how to deal with stroke the big tree. Uh, you can throw the long distance one. The short distance one is extremely dangerous though and cannot be thrown. The other thing is to understand that she just can't cross the ground very easily. She has to either come in with that low, the stroke the big tree, or she has to come in with her air dash, which puts her in the air. It's difficult for her to cover ground. The final tip against Eno is a lot of Enos after knockdown will fire a note at you. If you just hit the note with a long range move and actually get hit by it, it will reset you long before the Eno reaches you. The damage it does is tiny, and as a result, you can maybe catch her on the way in. If she's trying to dash, you can probably 6P her, for example, or just hit her out of her pressure. In closing, I do want to finish out by just saying like this isn't comprehensive, this isn't meant to be comprehensive, but this is meant to kind of get you started thinking about ways to deal with individual characters and maybe just give you a starting off point against some common stuff that you'll see online. I want to do more kinds of this content, so I'll probably just throw together another video that is just literally one tip against every character. And I want to see community tips. If you guys have tips to deal with, you know, how to deal with your character, for example, then I will definitely, like, pick out your comment, put it on screen and say, hey, yeah, like, this is a good tip. Let's talk about this. Uh, and just generate tips for each character and dealing with each matchup. That's a big part of Guilty Gear is just matchup knowledge. So let's get started building it. Other than that, thank you for watching to the end. I have been Josh, small voice amongst many, and if you learned anything from the video, feel free to drop a like. If you want more content delivered to you straight away, well, you can hit the sub button and the notification button. Otherwise, hopefully you enjoyed it, and thank you for watching to the end. I'll see you next time. See you, Luke. Feels good to be gangster. I shouldn't say that. Never say that again, Josh. Jesus.